Something about Gabe brings out the brat in me. The little girl who wears pigtails sticks out her tongue and throws tantrums. The grown-up woman who's been longing her whole life for someone to put her in her place, firmly and forcefully. What I love best about him is that he sees right through me and has since we first met. He's never tolerated my teasing or taunting, never wavered in his belief that what I really need is someone to lead so I can follow, even if I pout the whole time. Ultimately, as bratty as I may act, I know deep down that he knows what's best for me, that he'll do everything he can to both protect me and push my buttons. I wouldn't have it any other way, and believe me, I tried for a long while with men far more withholding than Gabe. I've been a kinky girl ever since I first started getting laid. Fortunately, my first lover was 15 years older and knew just what to do with his belt, lash it against my tender 19-year-old ass. He made me scream, Bob did, but oh how those screams have echoed in my head for the last decade, even as I've learned to scream harder, higher, happier, in my own way. I love screaming and crying when I bottom, but I found that a lot of so-called tops can't quite get, go there with me. Their inner anxiety about whether I'm really enjoying myself takes over. I can sympathize up to a point. I've spanked a few asses along the way, but anything more just doesn't feel right to me. So until I met Gabe, I was looking for someone who'd be my equal, my compliment and kink, and I just so happened to find him. We met when I was looking for a personal trainer. I'd been going to big, fancy gyms for years, and I knew all the games I could play. I realized early on that most of the trainers had good intentions, but their financial motivation allowed them to let me get away with slacking off. They were fearful that if they pushed me too far, I'd stalk off, never to be heard from again, not quite realizing that what I really needed was to be ordered around in a voice that meant business. With them, I could always flutter my long brown lashes and give a sexy smile to get out of doing the really onerous exercises, the ones that made me grunt, the ones that I knew were good for me, but like wheat germ, I just couldn't really stomach. <laughs> I got by like that for a long time, never truly pushing myself. I looked good, but not as good as I could look. And after I'd escaped from the gym, the high of getting away with doing something, very, with doing very little, soon wore off. I wanted someone to really kick my ass. Just the thought had my blood racing as I walked even faster across the Brooklyn Bridge, imagining a man literally cracking a whip behind me. I knew this would never really happen, but a kinky girl can dream, can't she? But when my latest trainer moved out to California, I started searching for a new one. I found Gabe, and I have to admit, I was attracted to his body first, before I even read his credentials online. His philosophy was in keeping with my ideas about fitness, too. He didn't seem interested in simply pumping out overly muscled men and women. I debated what to wear that first day and settled on a matching light purple tank top and pants, ones I thought looked good against my skin. I knew that wasn't really the point, but still, I wanted to look good. Something told me that Gabe was going to become more than my trainer, at least if I could help it. He scoffed at me when he saw my attire, insisting that next time I find something else to wear. Pastels are for pussies, he said, and just hearing him say that second P word had my own <laughs> aching. Remember that doll, he said, making the last word sound like an insult of the highest order. Then he put me to work with barely any chit chat. I wanted to let my mind wander, meandering from his firm chest down to what he was hiding in his pants, but there was no time to do anything but focus. Right away, we were pumping iron, and he didn't give me an inch. When I started to whine or complain, he got right up in my face. You're paying me good money to tell me how to run things? I don't think so, princess. Every time he got close to me, my heart beat faster, and I pictured him slamming me against the wall breaking my hands above my head and showing me how he was going to keep me in line with his cock. I kept picturing him naked, and lucky for me, that helped me lift even more weight. <laughs> we continued like that in the following weeks, the tension between us mounting, but neither of us acting on it. I got firmer, stronger, tougher, but inside, I was still looking for the man who could break me, who could make me whimper and sob and submit to him completely. The man who'd make me go to my lowest point, grind me to a pulp, then put me back together again, better than I was before. The man who knew what a girl like me needed. I hoped Gabe was that man, 
But part of the thrill, as maddening as it could be, was waiting for him to make the first move. It happened two months later. We were alone late at night at the gym. Nobody ever came in after nine. The window was open, but nobody was looking at us. We were alone, and even in the huge gym, that same tension swept over me with every move. I was doing pull-ups, and after eight weeks of practicing with a large red rubber strap around my leg as an aid, this time, it was all about me. Gabe wanted me to do it without assistance. 10 reps. It doesn't sound like that many until you try pulling against a metal bar with all your might and barely being able to move. I was smaller than I'd been when I first joined, but more muscular, and pulling my own weight up over the bar was hard. I was about to conk out after three attempts. My arms just hung there stubbornly, and when I tried to lift myself, my body seemed to get heavier, gravity fiercer. Grr, I said through gritted teeth like he taught me, but still I couldn't pull myself up. I'd inch upward a tiny bit, then drop down, my arms almost useless. You can do it, he said, his voice low and encouraging, good cop for once. I pulled, feeling the strain all through my arms, gritting my teeth, but just couldn't make it to the top. My eyes skimmed over the bar, but my chin couldn't get past it. I dropped down to the wooden box below me and gave him my patented fluttering eyes sexy pout combo. He responded by reaching out and pinching my lower lip, the one I thrust out just that little bit more. His fingers were firm and hard, and I gasped, but I couldn't deny that my pussy responded just as firmly as if he'd been touching me there. I'd been pinched before, but never there, and I'd had no idea that my lips were that sensitive. He kept his hand there, finally dropping it, only to take it only to break his fingernails down my chin and over my sweaty chest. They were clipped and neat and didn't hurt, but I felt their scrape nonetheless. You know what, Jen? You know what you need? I think you're just so used to being a spoiled, selfish, entitled brat who's got every guy she meets wrapped around her little finger that you don't know what to do when someone really pushes you. He'd raised his voice, the vibrations as powerful as his tone. He stepped closer so we were only about three inches apart. His fingers tucked my sports bra and thin white t-shirt down, downward, causing pressure at the back of my neck. What if I made you do this workout naked, huh? What if I made you come in here every day and strip in the bathroom and walk out totally bare? His words hung in the air, totally surreal, but nonetheless making me completely, utterly horny. As if by instinct, I glanced to my right, looking out the window and down on Third Avenue. Both of us knew that if I were naked, Anyone looking up would be able to see me. He dropped his hand. Actually, it's not a question. It's an order. Take off those sweaty clothes. Maybe it'll make it easier to lift yourself up. His eyes surveyed every inch of my body, catching my hard nipples beneath the layers, the outline of my pussy under my tight workout pants. I wondered if he could tell how completely wet I was. I wanted to plead for him to change his mind. And of course, I could have stalked off and walked out and I didn't think he'd have stopped me. But even more than I wanted to leave, I wanted to stay. I wanted to make him proud and horny, but I didn't want to give in too easily. I got the feeling he liked that I wasn't a pushover. Instead of begging, I turned defiant. Make me, I said, the brat in me coming out full force. <laughs> make you? Make you? You know, Jen, I've suspected just what kind of dirty girl you were since you first walked in here. But now I know for sure. You can damn well bet I'm gonna make you. How, it's time? Okay. Two minutes? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not gonna be able to read the whole thing, but I'll, I'll try to, I'll try, I'll try, I'll, we're almost no, at the end. No, stop. I'm gonna keep going. 